bless your name. That name that's above every name. That name every knee will bow and every tongue confess. We declare you are Lord. You are King. You are ruler. You are master. Have your way. We declare your will be done. Your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. That your will be done in our life. All across this room, I pray for our hearts to be open, eyes open. Those that are watching, Lord, let your anointing be released to destroy yokes and remove burdens. Let there be deposits of grace into our life. Revelation knowledge. Lord, teach us. Holy Spirit, come in a special way. Manifest yourself tonight with signs, wonders, and miracles confirming your word. And everybody said amen and amen. Well, give somebody a high five and tell them they're in the right place. Yeah, you're in the right place. Worship team, awesome job. Thank you. You guys are in the right place. Praise God. So glad you're here tonight. Pastor Sharon and the family are spending some time together uh, this week. We'll uh, pray for them and just believe for God to refresh them and let it be a very special time. Father, we do. We pray for Pastor Sharon and Pastor Paul and Pastor John. And Lord, we pray for Ruthie and Adam. And Lord, we pray for Sarah and Caleb. Lord, for all of the family, Sharice, Lord, and Ashley, Lord, bless them. Lord, pour out your spirit upon them. Guard them and keep them. Refresh them, Lord. Let it be a unique and special time in their life, Lord, as they're here, as they're there together as family. We pray the blessing of God upon them in Jesus' name. And everybody that agreed said amen and amen. Praise God. Make sure you start the year off right this weekend. We'll celebrate New Year's Eve on Saturday night, and we'll do it our regular 5 o'clock service. And as Ron already shared, Hilton Sutton, Dr. Sutton will be here. He's one of the foremost authorities on end-time prophecy. He will uh, share with us where we are uh, according to the prophetic word and God's word and bring us up to date in that. And so he'll probably go a, a couple of hours, 5 to 7, 5 to 7.30. After that, we will have the movie Courageous uh, available for those who would like to stay and watch that. We'll be having prayer in the first floor chapel after that and go through the night till, uh, till the midnight hour, till 1 o'clock and pray in the new year. And then Sunday will be the first. And uh, don't miss the very first Sunday of the new year. Get your year started right. We'll have 9 o'clock service, 11 o'clock service, and then Sunday night, 6 o'clock. Are you ready to get in the Word of God tonight? Are you hungry for the Word? Well, good. The Bible tells us when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. So let's get into the Word. Turn over to Romans uh, chapter 12. Tw Romans chapter 12. 12 and the, the word of the Lord tonight is the power of right thinking the power of right thinking for a life of victory how many of you want to have a life of victory sure all of us we, we want to have a life of victory God wants us to have a life of victory Jesus said he came to give us life and life more abundantly. So we want to have an overcoming, triumphant life, a, a successful life. And so tonight, I want to share with you what probably is the most powerful strategy or powerful secret in God's Word, the most powerful tool or weapon that God gives us as believers to enable us, to empower us to have a life of victory, a life of success. And let's just read here in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let me read it to you from another translation, from the New Living Translation. And it reads this way. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Did you hear that? 
let me read it to you again. New Living Translation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. In other words, don't be conformed to this world. But let God transform you into a new person. Let God transform you into a new person. Let me ask this. How many of you need to be transformed by God into a new person? Let me, let me ask that again. Some of you are looking a little puzzled by the question. Don't look at anybody else. How many here tonight, you that are watching, how many of you need to be transformed, changed by God into a new person? Let, let me help you out. <laughs> that was better. Yeah. You need to change. We, we all need to change. I need to change a lot. God's not finished with me yet. He's still working on me. I'm still under construction. And every person here, now, unless somebody that I've not seen or met yet has been able to, to be transformed into the exact likeness and the exact character of Jesus Christ, it, and unless that's happened in your life, unless you're perfect, Every one of us here need to be changed, transformed by God into a new person. Just look at the person next to you and tell them, you need to change a lot. And if it's your husband or wife, smile real big. <laughs> Point to yourself and say, I need to change a lot. Yeah, yeah, we, we need to, to change. Now, we're saved. The issue is not whether you're saved or born again. You're born again if you've accepted Christ to put your faith in him. You're a child of God. You're a joint heir with Christ. That's not the issue. The issue is once you're saved, the Bible says if any man's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. The spirit man's become new, but the soulish realm is on in a process of being saved, God is working on us. This is what Paul's talking about here in Romans chapter 12. He says, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed, be changed. Let God change you. So we need to be changed. We need to be transformed. Just shake your head. Yeah, got you. Need to change. Okay, now that we've got that established, this message is for everybody here. This is, that's the foundation we needed to start with the realization and understanding that we've not arrived yet, that every one of us here need to let God work on us. He's working in us to will and do his good pleasure. He's the master craftsman. He's the potter. We're the clay. We're on the potter's wheel, and I encourage you to stay on it. Don't jump off it. Let him continue to work on you. We need to be changed. We need to be transformed. The big question is this, and, and what the message is all about tonight, is how... Can we be changed? How can God transform us? The, the word there in the Greek is, metam, is where we get our word metamorphos, where we are totally changed like a caterpillar into a butterfly. How can somebody as ugly as we are be turned, transformed into a, a butterfly? What, what, it, what does it take how can God change us? Well, let me read it to you again because he tells us right here. Paul gives us the insight. I love the New Living Translation, the way that it's written. He says, don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by, here it is, changing the way you think. How can we be transformed? How can God change us into a new person, into a person that is like Christ? By changing our thinking. Thinking, our thinking, is the secret weapon of transformation and of victory. The word of the Lord tonight is the power of right thinking for a life of victory. So 
this word, if we can grab a hold of it tonight, can revolutionize our life. It can transform our, our life. This is probably the most powerful secret in God's word for living a life of victory. The most powerful weapon that God has given us. He can transform us and change us by our thinking. Our thinking is so powerful. There is power in our thinking. Right thinking will produce life. Wrong thinking will produce death. Right thinking will bring forth joy in your life. Right thinking will produce peace and righteousness and victory. Wrong thinking will produce sorrow, depression. Wrong thinking produces sin and defeat. Thinking is huge for us. It is powerful. It's the secret to transformation in our life. It's the power that can change us into the likeness of Christ if we understand the power of thinking. Thinking, right thinking, is going to produce life. That's how powerful it is. Turn to somebody and say, right thinking is powerful. It's so powerful, right thinking will produce victory in your life. It will produce life. Where on the other hand, wrong thinking, let, turn over to Romans chapter 8. Let me prove it to you from the Word of God. Romans chapter 8, just turn over a couple of pages. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. And we'll, we'll get proof of what I'm saying here from, from the Word of God. Verse 5, Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Paul says this, he says, For those who live according to the flesh, according to worldly standards, worldly customs. If you're living according to the flesh, they set their minds or they focus their thinking on things of the flesh, on worldly things. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, they focus their thinking, their mind, on the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So how important is our thinking? Does our thinking make a difference? Absolutely. The power of right thinking for a life of victory. Is our thinking important? Does our thinking make a difference? Absolutely. How much of a difference does it make? According to what we just read there, it's the difference between death and life, of defeat and victory. Do you want victory in your life? Do, do you want life? Or do you want defeat? Do, do you want death? The determining factor, according to what we just read here, is our thinking. There is power in our, in our thinking. And let me just tell you right now, there are negative Dangerous, deadly thoughts trying to captivate your thinking on a regular basis. All the time, these thoughts are trying to captivate your thinking. It can happen to you while you're driving down the road. Happen while you're sitting at your desk at work or on the assembly line or sitting in class. Right here, sitting in church, these thoughts, negative, dangerous thoughts can be coming at you. But you don't have to take those thoughts and think upon them. You, you don't have to grab a hold of those thoughts. In fact, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he says to cast down vain imaginations. It says to get rid of those wrong thoughts. What we want to do is get rid of stinking thinking and get a hold of right thinking. And so we, we see these thoughts that are coming at us trying to captivate uh, uh, our mind what well, we've got to decide whether or not we're going to take those thoughts on and dwell upon them. Brother Hagen used to put it this way. He said, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you sure can stop them from making a nest in your hair. See, no one is exempt from these wrong thoughts, these negative thoughts, these deadly thoughts, these dangerous thoughts from, from coming at you. But you have all the power in the world whether or not you're going to think on them or not. You do not. 
hear this, you do not have to, th- to think on anything you don't want to think on. I've heard people say, I just can't help it. I just, you know, I just think. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you, you can decide what you think on. A while back, I was doing some cleaning out in our yard on, on our driveway, and I had a, a blower going one of these engines that you start up and it blows leaves all over. The, the place just blows them to another place where you got to blow them to another place. I never I know exactly what good those blowers do, but you can blow, them, blow leaves all over the place. So I'm, I'm blowing these leaves, and we've got th- these huge retaining walls where we live made out of these railroad ties, and I was blowing some leaves up by them, and all of a sudden I started feeling something like something was biting me or something. And, you know, you've got this blower going, and it's rattling your ears, and all of a sudden I looked up, and coming out of... Uh, those railroad ties was a huge swarm of bees. They'd got a beehive back in behind there, and I'm, they are dive bombing me. I mean, I dropped that uh, blower. It's spinning around. I t- hightail it in the garage and into the house, and I'm, these bees are falling. I mean, I, it's just a huge swarm, tens of thousands of bees. I go upstairs, look out the window, and I'm watching those bees, and I'm, they got, you know, stung me on my hand. I'm thinking, man, those, those, those bees. And so, you know, I watched them, and finally they all started going right back in. It's kind of like a, there was a vacuum inside. They, they went back in there, except about, I don't know, maybe a few hundred just around the outside where they were. And then there was, they'd send out these trailers every once in a while just to see if I was still out there. I was watching from the window. <laughs> I went down to Home Depot, got one of these spray things of poison. I wanted to make sure it could shoot a long way, so the rest of the afternoon I spent trying to kill those things. I'd get about 10 feet away, aim that thing, and as soon as I start spraying here, they'd come. I'd run back in the house. (laughs) Hey, I wasn't waiting around to make buddies with those bees. I knew right away those bees were not my friends. They, they, They were pricking me with their little stingers. I, I, as soon as I figured it out, it took me a few seconds, but it, I, you know, I'm, I'm maybe not be the quickest guy, but I'm not the dumbest. I mean, I, I knew right away. I didn't want any, I took off. I, I, I tailed it into the house, got away from those bees. Well, you can have thoughts coming, and those thoughts can be like bees with stingers. Thoughts can be like poisonous rattlesnakes. You don't want to play around with them. You, you want to take and take those thoughts captive. Cast those vain imaginations out. You do not have to think on those things. See, there is power in our thinking. Right thinking will produce life and victory. Wrong thinking will produce death and defeat in our life. And tonight, what I'm wanting us to see is the power of thinking. First, that we need to be changed. We need to be transformed. We need to let God change us. He wants to change us into the likeness of Christ. How does he do it? He does it by changing our thinking. And and so, you know, what's the big deal about what we think? Well, according to the word of God, a lot. Our thinking makes a huge difference. The difference between life and death. We think on the right things and we produce life. We bring forth victory. Think on the wrong things, and you bring forth death, sin, defeat in your life. Proverbs 23, 7 tells us how powerful is our thinking. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Our thinking is so powerful, it determines who we are. Our thinking establishes our beliefs and core values of of our life. Our thinking determines the course of our life. If you don't like where you're at or where you're headed in life, I've got good news for you. You can change it by changing what you're thinking on. Let, let Let me read this to you. Thinking. How powerful is our thinking? Our thinking will determine our actions our behavior, our attitude, our habits. They're all birthed. Your attitude, the actions you take, who you are, are all birthed in our thinking. Our thinking is what transforms us. So it's extremely important that what you put in your mind and what you meditate on is 
based upon what God's word is because it will determine the course of your life. What we think about is the de determining where we're going and what we're accomplishing in life. It's determining the degree of success, the fruit that we have in our life. There is power in our thinking. Turn to somebody on the other side and tell them there's power in your thinking. Okay? So here's where we're at. I've got you to where I, where I want you to be right now because what I'm going to give you next is really what I want you to get tonight. What we've established so far is that we need to change a lot. Yeah. We, we, we need to understand. You know, we're a lot better off than we were I'm believing we are a lot better off than we were a week ago or a year ago that we've allowed God to work in us. But we know we've got a ways to go. We're saved. We're born again. We're children of God. But as a child of God, we want to yield to the Spirit of God to work in our life, to change us. How is he going to change us? Well, we went to the Word of God from Romans 12, and we see that he changes us by changing our thinking. God wants to transform us, change us, by helping us change our thinking. Well, what difference does it make what we think? A whole lot. There's power in our thinking. What we think is going to determine whether we have life or death, whether we have victory or defeat, whether or not we have joy or sorrow. There's a whole lot that thinking establishes in life. It's going to determine the course of our life. It's who we are. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is he. So there's tremendous power in thinking, it is the secret to transformation. Okay, what, what do we do? How do we, how do we get our thinking in the right way? What do we think on? What's the right thing to think? What's the standard? What's the key to what we think on? Well, I got good news. Paul gives us that in Philippians chapter four. Turn over to Philippians chapter four. And here's where the rubber meets the road and really what I wanted to get to tonight for, to, for us to, to deposit in our hearts and in our minds. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. You see, our thinking, do you know you're thinking every moment, every day? We're thinking all of the time. I mean, right now, you're thinking. Thinking is going on in our, our, our minds all the time. The daily newspaper gives us something to think about. The TV we watch gives us something to think about. The internet gives us something to think about. The radio that we're listening to gives us something to, to think about. I mean, we are surrounded by an ocean of information that's trying to influence our thinking. What do we focus on? Do we just, is our thinking just random? Is our thinking uncontrolled? Are we just victims of uh, the place we're at? Are we just victim to outer influences that are trying to influence us? Or do we have control over what we think about? Well, Paul, right here, is giving us the key, the blueprint to what we need to focus our thinking on. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. Here's where our thoughts need to be focused. I'm going to give you a little cross stick. Write down the word think down the left-hand side of your page. If you don't have a left-hand side of page, put it on the inside of your Bible. If you don't have the inside of your Bible, write it on the inside of your arm. Right? Think down the left side. What are we going to think on? We're going to think on things that are true. So you got T. We're going to take this down. We're going to base it off what Paul said here. I'm just going to give you something to help you to, to remember this. So think. we're going to think on things that are true. The truth. What's the truth? God's Word. So we're going to think on things that are related to the Word of God. We're going to think about Jesus. Jesus is truth. He said in John 14, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Word of God. So what are we going to focus our thinking on? Let's focus it on what the Word of God says. It says I'm more than a conqueror. 
It says, I'm forgiven. It says, I am blessed coming and going. It says, I'm having goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. It says that what I put my hand to prospers. It says I have favor with God and favor with man. I'm thinking on the truth. I'm not thinking upon what the TV's saying or what somebody else is saying. I'm going to focus my thinking on whatsoever is true. Then you've got H. We're going to think on things that are honorable. Those are things that are honest and just. This is right from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Just giving you a little helper here so that you can remember these things. Things that are worthy. We're not going to think on things that are not honest. We're not going to think on things that are contrary to what's right. We're going to think on things that are honorable. Then we have the I. We are going to think on things that are innocent. Things that are pure. According to Philippians 4.8. Things that are innocent. We're not going to think on trashy, ungodly things. We're going to think on things that are clean and righteous. So we're going to focus our thinking, understand the power of thinking. It's going to determine life or death. It is the key for victory in our life. Right thinking for a life of victory. So what are we going to think on? Man, we've got a roadmap, a blueprint right here. Think on these things. I'm going to think on things that are, are true. I'm going to think on the truth, things that are honorable. I'm going to think on honest, upright things. I'm not going to think and dwell on ungodly, unjust, dishonest things. I'm going to think on the innocent things, the things that are pure, not trashy things, ungodly things. The end, I'm going to think on things that are necessary. Those are the things that are lovely and of good report. Don't need to think on things that are not necessary for a godly life. I'm going to think on things that are necessary. And K, I'm going to think on things that are kind. That's virtue, things that are praiseworthy. I'm going to think upon those things. So if we can get our thoughts focused on these things. Now here, I'm going to give you an assignment. I'm taking 35 minutes here to, to teach this, but I'm going to give you an assignment, out of service assignment. I want you tonight and tomorrow, I want you to write down 30 to 50 things that fall into those categories. 50 things that are related to you specifically that are good, that are true, that are honest, that are righteous. What do you mean? Write down. Okay. Write down who you are in Christ. Write down that you are the righteousness of God. Write down you are more than a conqueror. Write down how you got saved. Write down when you got saved. Write down when you got filled with the Spirit. Write down when you got married. Write down when you prayed for somebody that got saved. Write down when you prayed for somebody that got healed. Write down when God has blessed you in some way. 30 to 50 things. Now, you can take it and write down 100 if you want, but I want you to write down 30 to 50 good reports. Now, why am I going to have you do this? Because I I want you to have these things inside of you so that when negative thoughts come, immediately you can begin to think. This is a game plan. You know, anybody that plays sports, when you go into game, I play football, basketball, baseball, we'd always go into game with a game plan, you know, to counter whatever the other team was going to do. We knew what they were going to do, and so we were prepared when they did it. We would come out with a play that would counter whatever they were doing. I'm giving you a game plan to counter what the enemy is going to try to do because he wants to captivate your thinking. He wants to get you to think on the, and dwell on the negative, the bad things. I'm here tonight to tell you, think on the good things. What are the good things? Focus on these things. I'm giving you, I'm, I'm you this probably is the most powerful strategy in God's word for victory in your life as a believer. God is the one who gave us a mind. He gave it to us so that we could implement this powerful tool and weapon of right thinking. What are you going to think? Think on what's pure. See, this is how you can overcome habits, bondages. If, you, if you're, you're trapped in something you can't seem to get out, this can get you out of it. See, everything you do is a result of what you think. Nobody does something just 
without thinking about it. Everybody who's ever robbed a bank, they thought about it. They just didn't pop in one day, rob the bank. I, had, I didn't, didn't, didn't have a clue, didn't think about that. No, everything we do is a result of thinking about it. So here, why not think on the good things, the honest things, the pure things? Well, what are those things? Write them down. Get yourself a game plan. Right now, 30 to 50. You should be able to write down 200 of them. And the moment the enemy tries to bring a negative thought, you don't, t- you don't think. So you can't think two thoughts at one time. The moment so, you know, some kind of a discouraging thought, depressing thought, I mean, I was in a situation today, could have been discouraging. I just got done thinking about this message, so I got my thinking going in a positive way, thinking on the good things, rejoicing in the Lord. There are so many things. Now, listen, I understand that we can have negative things going on in our life, trying times. I'm not saying that we stick our head in the sand and don't understand that there are situations that we're in the midst of storms that we have to go through. But here's a secret. How are you going to navigate through that storm? You're going to get your thinking lined up with the Word of God. You're going to get your thinking lined up with things that are honorable, the kind things, the pure things, and quit allowing your thoughts to gravitate towards the the gloom, the doom, the negative, the deadly things that lead to defeat, that lead to sorrow, that lead to discouragement and depression. I'm going to think on things that bring me joy, peace, bring me victory, bring life. God's given us the strategy. He's given us the ability the most simplest of people can take. and apply. You don't have to be an Einstein or a rocket scientist to use this. In fact, sometimes the more brainy you are, the harder it is to break through into the simplicity of what God's Word says. He chooses the foolish things to confound the wise. Think on these things. Not only do we think on these, let me give you the second part of this strategy. It comes from Joshua 1.8. He says, meditate day and night. Meditate day and night on the Word of God. So I'm going to have you write these 30 to 50 things down or more. You're going to rehearse those things. You're going to meditate on those things so that they become a part. The psalmist put it this way. David said, I take and hide God's Word in my heart. What we're going to do is we're going to hide the things of God, the good things, whatever is of good report. No negative reports, no bad reports, no dishonest reports, no bad things, no ungodly things. We're going to record the godly things. And we're going to write them on the tablets of our heart. How are we going to do that? We're going to do it by meditating. Now, the moment you say the word meditate, people get nervous. And so, consequently, the church misses out on one of the most huge benefits God gives us. Because the moment you say meditate... Immediately, people start thinking about Eastern religions and cults and, and metaphysics and mind over matter and, and uh, all the things that are related. That's a counterfeit to what God gives us in the Word of God. He talks about meditating m- several times. Psalm 1, meditate. What we're meditating on is not the way the world or metaphysics or the way Eastern religion does it, trying to find your inner self. We're not trying to find inner self. We're not trying to empty ourselves. We're trying to fill ourselves with God. This is about focusing in on God. And when we meditate upon the good report, when we meditate upon the honest report, when we get focused on those things, on the Word of God, and we deposit those in our heart, hide them in our heart, you're equipped, you're prepared, you've loaded the gun to be able to overcome the attacks of the enemy and walk out victory. I'm talking about for a lack of better example, loading your gun. I grew up hunting. Now, I know if some of you struggle with the idea of going hunting, you know, if you, if you live in the Midwest, it's just part of growing up. I understand different thoughts on it. I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up when I was just a little guy with a gun. We were hunting, and, and we went hunting, and I'd go pheasant hunting, quail hunting, duck hunting, and goose hunting, and deer hunting. I know, not Bammy. I didn't, didn't go out, just deer. One, one day we were out hunting ducks and, and geese. 
And we had, we had one of the best spots. It was on my grandfather's land. We lived under one of the main flyways, and the, the river went through his land, and it widened up real big, and it's just a great big place, and we had p- freshwater ponds. and I mean, it was just, I mean, those geese and duck would come flying over the trees in the bend, and immediately they were just attracted to this, this spot. We had all the decoys out in there, and it's just a beautiful spot. It's, and if you're hunters, it's exciting. If you're not hunters, everybody's going, what is he talking about? I'm going to get done with the story real quick. It has a point. It has a point about having a life of victory. And it was just about getting dark. You can't shoot after dark when the sun goes down. And so it was about that time when you probably shouldn't shoot, but just coming over the trees was this huge flock of Canadian geese. Now, I don't know why these Canadian geese have to walk around our property all the time. It just, I, growing up, I just was praying for Canadian geese to come flying in. Now I got these Canadian geese. I want to get out of here. But here they come. And my buddy, he's one of the best goose callers. I mean, he, in fact, he was a champion goose caller. He began to call those geese in. And then they just started coming right at us and began to set their wings and, and knew they were coming. So we were just, you know, waiting until they got close enough. I've got my gun ready. Got two guys. We got their guns ready. And just at the right time, we stand up and pull our trigger. Their guns go up. My gun's not going off. I have a double barrel, 16 gauge. And I, I am just... And, of course, after they shoot, the geese are gone. I didn't get a shot off. I'm thinking, I got dud bullets. Somebody gave me dud bullets, didn't get them loaded right. I mean, I just opened up the gun, and there was no bullets in the gun. (laughs) I went hunting with no bullets. A lot of believers are hunting with no bullets. They're letting their minds be filled with garbage from the enemy. They're letting the bees dive bomb their thoughts and captivating their thinking. Tonight, I'm giving you a word from heaven for a life of victory, the power of right thinking, to fill your mind with good things, good thoughts. Write down those 30 to 50 things. Meditate on those things. Get them hidden in your heart. And you'll be prepared and you'll be equipped when the enemy comes flying over those trees and sets its wings to be able to unload on the enemy and blast your way into victory. Going from victory to victory, faith to faith, and glory to glory. Everyone bow your heads across this room. I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray for 2012 to be a year of victory. A year of triumph. A year in which you've got your mind focused on the Word of God. If you're here tonight and you're in a, in a battle, maybe you've allowed negative thoughts to come into your life. Maybe you're in a situation where you've allowed fear to, to grab a hold of your heart. You may be here and, and just the situation you're in, it's just, it, it's just you're, you're tormented with these negative thoughts. Tonight's a night to get free from those thoughts and to begin to let God help you replace those with good things. If you're here and you need help from heaven to load up your mind with the things from God that can equip you to take you into victory, maybe you feel defeated, maybe you feel discouraged, maybe you're caught in, in sin, you've allowed wrong thoughts to take you a wrong way, where you're discouraged, where you're down, where where it seems like you're defeated. Tonight's a night for you to get turned around and step into a place of life and freedom and begin to walk out victory. Tonight, I want to pray for you, for God to help erase your mind of those negative thoughts, to take 2 Corinthians chapter 10, take those thoughts captive and begin to replace those thoughts with the power of God's Word in your mind and to put them in your heart. This is a night for breakthrough in every area of life, to take and put your mind on the things of God, to get right thinking, to get rid of stinking thinking and get a hold of right thinking. Maybe somebody's treated you wrong and you've just had a real tough time not thinking about how badly that person person's treated you, how they've, how they've done things that are unjust in your life, and you just, you just continue to think on those things. Tonight is the night to get that broken off of, your, off of your life and to be set free from that. Maybe you're here and you just realize you need, as you finish up this year, to make a fresh commitment to renew your mind with the Word of God. Maybe you're here and you've not been open to letting God change you, and tonight you're saying, you know what, I hear what you're saying. I need to be changed. 
a lot. All across this room with every head bowed, if you're here and you say, that's me, and any of those things, and I covered a whole lot of things, and you're saying, you know, I just want you to pray and agree with me because I want to get my mind renewed with God's word. I want God to work in me, to change me, and I want to break through to where God wants me to go. Just lift up your hand and say, that's me. I want you to pray. Yeah, all across the room, hands all over. Yeah, I want everyone just to stand up with me. And I want everyone who just raised your hand to come quickly. Just come to the front, and this is just an act of faith. And if somebody's there, just step back and just say, excuse me, I'm going to the front because I'm getting my breakthrough tonight. Excuse me, I'm going to get my mind renewed. Yeah, you just come. You raised your hand. This is all kinds of different situations, and tonight's a night of saying, I'm making a fresh commitment to allow God to work in my life. Some of you just come in and say, you know what? I just want to let God work in me to change me and help me be transformed into what God wants me to be. It takes that step. It takes that willingness. Some of you, you've got to get rid of some of that stinking thinking. You don't have to think on those bad thoughts. You can make a decision with God's help to take those thoughts captive. You can swat those bees away. You can load up your gun and get ready. And God can take you from faith to faith and victory to victory. As they're coming, if you're here for water baptism tonight, if you'd get your things and bring your family with you if they want to come as well and come right up here over by the piano, we want to pray for you if you're here for water baptism. If you're here considering making Victory your home church, if you'd get your things and make your way right over here, we have uh, our new members, uh, pastors over here to meet you, to answer any questions that you have. If you're here visiting with us, we have a reception for you. We want to let you go first, right out these center doors and across the foyer. We have some refreshments for you and some things we want to give you and just to get you know a little bit better. So if you'd get your things and make your way out right there. The rest of you, I want you to just stretch your hands out towards these that came forward. And you that came forward tonight, this is a breakthrough night. A night for your mind to be renewed. A night for God to do something in it. A night of commitment on your part to receive the power of God's Word to begin to allow Him to transform your life. If you don't know Christ, tonight's a night to come forward. If, during the communion time, if you raised your hand to be saved, you come. Because you're saved the moment you prayed that prayer, but now you're on a journey of transformation. The same journey we're all on. Or stretch your hands out. I want you all to say this prayer right now. Just say, Jesus, my eyes are on you. You're the author and the finisher of my faith. Thank you for working in me. I yield to you. Your will be done. Work in my heart. Transform my mind. Help change me. Help me to focus on the good things. I take captive the negative thoughts, the bad thoughts, the evil thoughts. And I put my focus on the pure things, the just things, the true things, the righteous things. Help me, Lord, to stay focused. I'm determined to get my mind renewed with the Word of God. My heart transformed. I'm going to hide the Word of God in my heart. And I'm going to have a life of victory. There's power in right thinking. No more stinking thinking, only right thinking. Now everybody across this room, just lift up your hands and make that declaration. You just to the Lord right now, I'm focused on right thinking. No stinking thinking, only right thinking. I'm going to be equipped and prepared. I'm not going to allow those bees to sting me. I'm going to take those thoughts captive, and I'm going to dwell on the good things, the just things, the pure things, and I'm going to go from strength to strength, glory to glory, faith to faith, and victory to victory. Now give him a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me your name. You're for water baptism. Bernie. Bernie. Yes. You water baptism. Bernie. Byron. And you're for water baptism? Yes. What's your name? Claire. Claire, all right. You for water baptism? Isaac. Isaac, all right. This is awesome. You all received Jesus into your heart? Accepted him, believe in him, put your trust in him? Well, tonight's a great night for water baptism. And as you're baptized tonight, you're declaring openly to everybody that you've died with Christ and you've been risen with him to new life, to walk out this victory and allow him to transform you and to change you into his image. Father, I pray for these tonight. Lord, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, 
the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we declare it. We pray for Claire tonight to be a special night. Lord, for all of these, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can just follow Jake right there. He's going to take you right up here, right around to the changing room, and then we'll open up these curtains. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Wish you a very, very blessed new year. Come back this weekend. I will be ministering Sunday morning, 9 and 11, and I believe I've got a word for us about living a life of impact, significant impact, maximum impact. If you want to find out that Take your life to another level and have impact 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock Sunday. God bless you. We'll see you this weekend.